Hi, my beautiful brothers and sisters. This is Mary Hernandez with part two of Genesis Kingdom. Um, with part two of um, Holy Mountain is Mount Zion. Um, and as I have read to you from Kings um, 1, I'm sorry, Kings 1, 8, it was telling you how God is saying, continue um, seeking the commandments of God. Follow thy way. What did he say? It was him that stopped answering our prayers. He did it because we were sinning. And he's saying, continue doing right. And then I will plead to heaven and heaven will go ahead and start the blessings. That was kind of our consequences for our sins. So now it brought me to 1 Kings 9. And it came to pass when Solomon had finished the building of the house of the Lord. The king's house at all Solomon desire, which he had pleased to do. The Lord appeared to Solomon a second time, and he had appeared unto him in Gibeon. The Lord said unto him, I have heard the prayer of thy supplication, and thou hast made before me. I have hollowed this house, which thou hast built, to my, to my name, therefore forever in my eyes and in my heart shall be there perpetually. Like he's going to be here forever, no matter what. Holy Hill. No going nowhere. He's he's been. He never left. It's you that turned away and was um shunning evil. I mean you were actually not shunning evil. You were um participating with darkness and the blood covet with Satan. If thou will walk before me as David thy father walked in integrity of heart and in the uprightness to do what is to do according to all that we have commanded thee, then I will keep and you will keep my statutes and my judgment. What does that mean? You know, you can't serve the darkness of, of dark, of the king of the darkness, and want the God of the living, that he is a creator of the ends of the earth, and expect him to be answering your prayers. He, it, you fall death to his ears because you're serving darkness. You're being slave to darkness, to Satan in a blood covet. You can't love one and hate the other. I mean, you can't love one and love the other. You either hate one and love the other or love one and hate the other. And it's telling you can't love manna and love um, God at the same time. Which is it? You have to bring a sacrifice to the altar. You have to give up what it is that had you in a sinful world. And then maybe, then maybe he will answer. But how about if he just answers the saving you? You don't think that alone is, is rewarding? It is. It's just your mindset. Your mindset is used to the things functioning of the things of the world and being content with what you have. But instead, you're settling still and saying, well, no, I want this. I want that. You know, and when he said, well, I want my children to come back to me and stop serving the darkness. But that's not what we say. That's not what we that's not what we're hearing. You know. You, you have to also change your ways. Become a noble person to God, to the only God. There is no other God. The other one's a copycat. The other one's a wannabe. It's always been like that. Always. He wanted to be like God. He will never be God, ever. Not even me, not even us that we're under kinship. We're in an image of God to represent heaven on earth. We're not representing the darkness. And when you act like that, then that's exactly what you're representing. They still kill and destroy they sit there and do witchcraft to get what they want. Evil to people, bring sickness, death, financial wounds. And you're acting just like that because you're wishing bad on a daughter. And why? Because it's not you. Why isn't it you? Witchcraft maybe? Because you're sinning? Because you don't want to change the ways from the world? That's exactly why. And you're acting just like the darkness. And hello, who do you belong to? Then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever. I promise to David, thy father, saying, Thou shall not fail thee, amen, upon the throne of Israel. It says, But if you shall all turn from following, it says, If you should all turn from following me and ye and your children, you will not keep my, it says, You will not keep my commandments, my statutes, which I have set before you but you go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I had given them 
in this house in which I had hollowed for my name that I will cast out in my sight, and Israel will be a proverb, a byword among all people. And at this house, which is the high, and everyone that passes by it shall be astonished, and it shall his. And they shall say, Why had the door done those unto the land to this house? And they shall answer because they forsook the Lord their God who brought forth the fathers out of the land of Egypt. They have taken a hold upon their gods and I have worshipped them and served them. Therefore hath the Lord brought upon them all in this evil. And it came to pass at the end of twenty years when Solomon had built two houses at the house of the Lord and the king's house. Now Hiram the king of Tyre had furnished Solomon with cedar trees and fir trees. What did I tell you about? Those the trees were the women. They were the twelve chosen. The they were the women that were actually chosen that hold the birthrights. It's like what kind of tree are you producing? Are you producing good fruit? Are you reaping good fruit? And it tells you over and over again how to win. I'm gonna tell you something that I had even asked. I was all like, man, I didn't have money in my hand. I had prayer that was more powerful and worth more than any gold, any silver in this world, right? But I could also have told you, um, people were like, well, what? We don't have money. You know, you have your hands. You have your prayers. Pray with them. Get the Bible. That's worth more than anything in the world. What did Peter say? I don't have gold. I don't have silver. But in Jesus' mighty name, rise up and walk. And I mean, we'll get up and walk. If you're walking and you cleanse yourself, the anointing that you have is just as powerful. The thing is, when you're still serving darkness, it is dead. It's not working because you're serving darkness. You know? And it's reaping good seed. You're wishing and praying against somebody's not reaping good seed. You're reaping bad. And that's exactly karma that's going to come back to you. Repent. How are you going to pray and ask God to help you answer your prayers? Or even if you're blessed already by God. And you're wishing, you're wishing bad upon a sister or a brother. Woe to you. God gives, God takes it away. You need to repent. You're acting just like the enemy. You already have one, a real one that's fighting, not the hate, not the jealousy. He has you right where he wants you because he's going to watch your downfall because that's exactly what you're doing to yourself. You're fighting God's, your own people, God's people, the way Satan does. <laughs> Whose side are you on? <laughs> I don't need you to be on my side. I don't need you to like me, but take care of your own. Sit there and pray for your downfall. You know, sit there and pray so you don't fall into a downfall of the enemy. That's exactly what he's doing. He gets a twofer. He gets you to do his dirty work and going against your own sister or brother. And then, boom, he's also going to watch your downfall because you curse yourself. So he gets twofers. You get to try in a... In a prayer that's never going to happen, all you're going to do is curse yourself and you watch your own downfall. You rip what you sow. And all this time still, I was showing up telling you, rip good seed. Even if you see somebody, hey, how are you? You know, a good compliment. Open the door for somebody. Um, go to the church that you're close to. You know, do you need somebody to open the door? Do you need me to distribute something? It's small things. It doesn't have to be always about money. If you have it, then good, and God sees it when you're doing it from your heart. If you're doing it because you want to get blessed, well, then I'm sorry. He's not going to answer you. It says, Now Hiram, the king of Tyre, had furnished Solomon with the cedar trees and the fir trees and the gold, according to all the desires where the king Solomon gave Hiram 20 cities in the land of Galilee. And Hiram came out from Tyre to see the cities which Solomon had given him. And they pleased him not. And he said, What cities are these that thou hast given thee, my brother? And he called them into the land of Kobol and into this day. I'll say unto this day. They call that land Kobol. And Hiram said unto the king a six score talents of gold. Hmm. And the reason of Levi was the king of Solomon rise to build the house of the Lord. But his own house was Milo and um, the well of Jerusalem of Hazer and Mendigo, Migo, Mendigo, and Jezer. Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, had gone up to take Jezer. 
and they burned it with fire and slain the Canaanites, and they dwelled in the city given to the present unto his daughter, Solomon's wife. <laughs> he went and married Pharaoh's daughter, our enemy, the one that was slaving us, sitting there killing, you know, <laughs> we were beaten, we were raped, people were being uh, cut open, babies being poured out. And you got a God's child that made a covet with the enemy that's sitting there wanting nothing bad for us. <laughs> wow. And Solomon built Gezer and Beth Horon and neither. But Balath and Tamar in the wilderness is the land. All the cities that store in Solomon had the cities and his chariots and the city for the horsemen in which Solomon desired to build in Jerusalem and Lebanon and all the land of his dominion. All the people that were left was the Amorites, Hedites, Petzorites, Hevites, and Jebusites. All these were not the children of Israel. Do you remember when I did a little um, thing on there? They're called elements. Those were the kings, the ungodly kings. They were entities, you know, demonic kings of the world. In, in nations, when he would go, that's what God was removing everywhere we go. That's what he removes. Those are elements, and I did one in there. And that's all over in the Bible as well. You can look it up. I did one in it, but I also um, backed it up with Bible verses. And then you got the affiliators, remember? Um, if you watch um, Angels and Demons, that's really what's going on. <laughs> and the enemy was using you to fight against your own. That's pretty sad. It says to jump but repent. You know, the Lord hasn't given up on you, obviously. And that's why I continue showing up and praying. You know, the children were left after them in the land in whom the children of Israel also were and not able, not able utterly to destroy upon those that did Solomon, Levi, and tribute and bond service unto this day. But the children of the Israel did to Solomon make no bondsmen, but they were the men of war and his servant and his prince, his captains and the rulers of his chariots and his horsemen. They were the sheep of the officers that were over Solomon's work, 550, and they bear rule over the people that wronged the work. But Pharaoh's daughter came up unto the city, and David said unto, he, unto her, house in which Solomon had built for her, and when she did build Milo. It says, three times a year did Solomon offer the burnt offerings and peace offering upon the altar, which he built unto the Lord. He burned incense upon the altars because of the Lord. So he finished the house. King Solomon made a navy ships in, Ezon, in Zion, in Jeber, and besides Eloth, this is the shore of the Red Sea, the land of Edom. Give me a minute. <coughs> okay, I had to drink some water real quick. I'm sorry, the sodi. <laughs> and Hiram sent in the navy his servant, the shipman. It says then he had knowledge of the sea, who the servants of Solomon. They came up to offer and they fetch from thence gold four hundred and twenty talents, and they brought it to King Solomon. Now that is one Kings nine. All right, I'm changing the page. So I'll be starting one Kings ten. It says, and when Queen of Sheba heard the fame of Solomon, right? It says, concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove to him a hard question. Everybody knows that the Queen Sheba was his mom. You know, so when they put Solomon and Queen Sheba, it was his mom. It tells you that she was married to King David. So when Queen, she when Queen of Sheba heard the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him and had hard questions. She came to Jerusalem and was very great, trained with the camels and bare spices, very much gold and precious stones, which were to come to Solomon to commune with him and all, all that was in her heart. Solomon told her in all the questions that there were not a thing that hit from the king which he told her not. When Queen Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom, 
in the house that he had built. It says that the meat of his table that were sitting as a servant and the attendants of his minister, their apparel and his cup barriers and the ascent by which he went up to the house and the Lord and there was no spirit in her. She said to the king, it is a true report that I hear my own land that the acts and thy wisdom. How be it, I believe not the words until I come to my eyes and I've seen it. Behold, half of it was not told to me. Thy wisdom and prosperity is exceeding the fame which I heard. Happy are thy men and happy are thy servants which they stand continually before thee that they had heard thy wisdom. Blessed be the Lord, the God which delighted in thee to set thee on the throne of Israel. Because the Lord loveth Israel forever, and therefore made he thee the king to do the judgment of justice. And if you remember, Queen Sheba was the one that went to King David when he was on his dying bed. And she told him in his dying bed, basically, oh yeah, well, it's, it's Queen, it was, you know, David is, um, Solomon is up next. So he was kind of like, yeah, it was never for them to decide. Because it was never. The next one in the lineage was the daughter that he had chosen. <laughs> daughter Zion. She gave him the king and a hundred talents. She gave him, remember? She gave him the king a hundred talents. A hundred, yeah. It was a hundred talents of gold and spice that were very great store. The precious stones there came and no more to the abundance of spices. And there... In this which the queen of Sheba gave to the king Solomon. And the navy also of Hiram that brought the gold of Ophir brought Ophir and great plenty of almond trees and the precious stones. The king made the almond trees pillars of the house and the Lord. For the king's house was harps, also palm trees for singers. But they came no such almond trees. It says, nor was it seen unto this day. It says, King Solomon gave unto the queen of Sheba all her desires and whatsoever she asked besides which Solomon gave her his royal bounty. So she turned and went on her way to the country and she and her servants. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon. Are you listening to this? Okay. This is 1 Kings 10, 14 Bible verse. Okay. It says, now that the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 603 score, six talents of gold, which was 666. Besides that, he had a merchant man and one that trafficked spice and merchants and all the kings of Arabia, of the governors of the country, and King Solomon made 200 agents of bitten gold. 600 talents of gold went to one target. Because that's who was also blessing him. Just so you know. It wasn't from God. It was from ungodly kings. There were uh, elements from a different. It was Arabian. That's who he built. That's what he used to build the temple of Solomon. Of God. But Solomon made it. So you know. And he made 300 shields of beaten gold. Three pounds of gold that went in one shield. The king, but put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. And remember, I just did one of the forests of Lebanon. You know what it means. Where the tree of life. Tree. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it the best gold. The houses were meant for the daughters. You know. And they ended up building it for somebody else because it was never for them because they married ungodly queens that had nothing to do with royal lineage. None of it at all, you know. But, you know, just so you'll know, the throne had six steps and on the top of the throne was roundabout. But there where they stayed on either side of the palace of the place of the seat was two lions that stood besides the stays. The twelve lions stood there in one side and the other was the six steps that was not. They were like they made in any kingdom. It was like King Solomon. 
drinking vessels were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were pure gold, but none were of silver. It was nothing accounted to the days of Solomon. And the king of the sea and the navy of Tarish, the navy Hiram, and then it says, bringing in gold and silver, ivory and apes and the peacocks. King Solomon exceeded all of the earth and the riches for wisdom. <laughs> all the earth sought to Solomon to hear wisdom, and God had put in his heart. Do we have beautiful spiritually gifts from heaven? Absolutely, because we were of God's children. But it's like, what are you using your talents? What is it? That's what it means. He gave you a talent. What are you doing with that talent? Are you prospering for the kingdom of heaven? Are you looking for righteous? Because where your heart is, is where your treasure is. That's also a Bible verse. But when you're using it to seek the things of the kingdom of darkness, then who are you serving? You know? It says, and they brought every man his present vessels and silver. And the vessels of God and garments and armor and spices and horses, mule rate year by year. Solomon gathered together the chariots of horsemen and thousands of 400 chariots and 12,000 horsemen who bestowed the city of chariots for the king at Jerusalem. Now it says the king made silver to be in Jerusalem as stones and the sitters made he to be as sycamore trees, but they were in veil in abundance. And Solomon had horses brought out of Egypt and the linen and yarn and the king merchants received the linen and yarn at a price. The chariot came up and they went out of Egypt, 600 shekels, silver, horse and a hundred, 50 and all the kings of Hades and the kings of Syria. I said, did they bring them out by their means? You know, if, if it's just, like the, my best advice is when you read the Bible, everybody starts, everybody studies different. Nobody, nobody could say, you know, oh, this is the best way you could do this. The only advice that I could give you, you study your way that you learn because you know how you learn. All I could do is direct you and point out to you. Um, Ruth Abbey is amazing. And I had told you, you know, um, there was some things that she had preached, um, at first, you know, and I had wrote down all of them, you know, anytime she would get on there, because I already knew from the very beginning that God had picked me uh, as a kinship, you know, a God. But um I don't know why even that I question it, because it was more like I didn't want him to think I was putting myself up there with him. So I decreased myself. I said, OK, I know I'm chosen. I know I'm here to do big things for him. I didn't know details. Um I started asking people, huge mistake, you know, because there were enemies that were paid off. So they're going to detour you away the way that they want you because the enemy, they're being sold out. My mom sold out. After that, I was like, uh-uh. And he separated me not to be around people. You know, yes, I would come out, you know, and I prayed over people when I was out there, but I didn't go hang out with them. You know, we didn't take off, go out, you know, anything they would offer me food sometimes. Um, I miss them, you know, I, I was out there praying for them, you get to know them, you know, I prayed for them, I would always be like, hey, did you pick up the Bible today, I called this lady, she's so beautiful, um, Natalie, I would call her Natalie Nicole, I'll go, did you pick up the Bible today, Miss Natalie, and then she'll be like, yes, Miss Mary, I go, you better not be lying to me, you know, but I would always say, say hey, can you use a prayer today, you know, I try to approach it not rough, you know, but slow and steady because I was out there once. I could relate to them. I understand that. I knew the spiritual warfare that's really going on. I saw them and that's why I have a forgiven heart. Why I do forgive because I saw them working in, in their self, like being happy, laughing, you know, of course, cry at times, sad at times, you know, happy, you know, um, upset, mad, whatever, you know, like we all do. Um, and then there was days that you could tell when the demons were in there working on them. I would get spit at. I would get cussed at. Like, I would be called every name of the book except a child of the most high God, you know. But I seen that. And because I seen that is why I understood. 
why I had to have a forgiven heart because I seen them. You know what I'm saying? And I understood that. So of course I, I got close to them, you know? You know, stop by sometimes they bring me donuts, something, something. They already knew. Here, I got some change. Go get something to drink. You know, I already knew I love pop, you know, and they would grab me some and bring me some, you know. Sometimes I had my own. Sometimes I didn't. Sometimes I had. Sometimes I didn't, you know. I learned to be content, but I also had my well up. You know, I need to say no. Sometimes I would get asked to go out, but God said no. You know, if you're going to get asked to go out, you know, to drink, it was with my roommate that he had me with. And she would say, come on, Becky. So you can meet a galan. She calls her. That's a gentleman. And I said, no, my Belena. And she'll say, why? I said, because I go, I don't want to. I said, you know, I'm okay with it. God has a husband that is at the end of the road. Oh, come on. But they get paid. They get paid to try to get you to sin, you know. And you got to understand if he has you alone, be alone. Trust no one. Don't try to go around them because they have they want nothing but bad for you. Nothing, and that's the truth. They get paid. They get promised a house or a car, you know, money, you know, and drugs, whatever it is. You're dispensable to somebody that's is at a hard time and really don't care. You know, I cared. I wouldn't have sold out, you know, but I'm not a me. Not everybody's like me. Not everybody has a mindset. Not everybody has their heart, you know, like that. Everybody's different. You know, I always say I have my father's heart. I know I do. I know I do because I'm slow to anger. <laughs> I really am. It takes a lot to get me there. But if you get there, you better run. <laughs> Just kidding. I pray now and it gives me the victory. <laughs> I don't fight like that no more, but... You know, just so you'll know, you know, I pray and prayer and prayers are powerful. Just saying, let that be your weapon for the enemies that come against you. Let it be because it's more powerful than you having to waste your breath and your heart really to get all upset over something that really doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, you say, oh, there's just evil spirits speaking through them and you brush it off because you know how real the spiritual warfare is out there. I'm going to try to find another Bible verse that I wanted to read. If I'm not, I'm probably going to shut it um, for today. Um, but like I was telling you about Ruth Abbey real quick, um, I wrote down, you know, I would hear her, you know, because I was already God. I knew, but I it was like I wanted to piece it together. And I've told you guys this before. I wanted to piece it together. So when I preach to you, I, I could back it up with Bible verses. Like I see it. I was seeing he, she, he, he, her, daughter, daughters, you know, I was like, it's in there, you know? And then it was like, I wrote down all the ones that she was saying and I went and I opened the book and I would read it. I goes, no, I don't see it. I went, nope, I don't. Nope, I don't. Because I needed to look for it and get clean and take my time with it. Get to know it. And then I got revelation. I've been getting revelation. I don't know for how long. And I've been sharing it with you. You know, and getting the revelation on your own is beautiful. Like I already knew that she was. And even at times I was like, wait a minute. She said something that ain't right. But it wasn't. I was actually wrong. Because it was a woman God that God had picked. And remember I told you when he showed me in a vision, Eli. Um, and I had to look up Eli. Because I was all like the only time I was like, Eli, father, like I have never seen um, the only Eli I remember seeing in the Bible um, was um, when King Jesus was like, um, Ali, 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 you know, which is like, my God, my God, why have you forgotten me? You know, um, and I had a. Look it up when I got up to look. And it says, Eli means a high and elevated. It comes from Hebrew. Eli, Eli means God. Although it could be used by parents and religious or not. Eli is biblical name that continues to be a strong ties with Judea, Christian, tradition, Bible. Eli priest also in the, in the Old Testament. You know, it also means God. It means Lord. It's in Hebrew. You know, and I was like, oh my God, you know, I get it. You know, it's in there. So, you know, he was, he told me this at the very beginning. Then he gave me a vision. Like right here, I was on my wake. I hit Eli. He shows me visions, you know, with my eyes closed. It should be dark, but he was showed me. And it was like in a cloud. 
in letters that you can see it. And it's like that. I told you he showed me dove. I did one in a dove. He showed me two doves. He showed me an anchor. He showed me a cross. Anything that he does, I go and I search it for you. He showed me Micah. Go read Micah. Micah 4 gave me the answer. It was